Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us here today. My name is Ronnie Rios, and I'm really excited to be able to talk to you today about the release of Claris FileMaker 19, our first open platform. Now, before we dive in, I do have some brief housekeeping notes. We hope you have a great experience in today's webinar. And if you have any technical issues with GoToWebinar, please contact technical support at 833 851-8340. Now outside of the US, please call 0800-031-4760. During today's presentation, you will have an opportunity to type in questions. So let's briefly talk about how you submit your questions. You can simply go to the control panel, click on the question section, type in your question there and click on the send button. And we'll cover as many questions as time allows us at the end of our presentation. But remember, you don't have to wait till the end to type those in. And with that, let's get started. Now, in order to provide the tools to create the best modern app experiences, Claris has a vision to make powerful technologies available to everyone. Now, powerful technology means things like cloud and artificial intelligence, the technologies that your customers require in their modern apps. We want to make sure that the power of cloud smart technology is available not just in the cloud, but on every device, on-premise or even offline. And low-code technology should be accessible to all users, but also extensible by pro developers. So powerful technologies available to everyone. And that takes us to the next chapter of FileMaker, Claris FileMaker 19. Claris FileMaker 19 is a special release for a few reasons. First, to make sure that we continue to be the ideal path for you to deliver those modern custom apps that your clients demand, beginning with Claris FileMaker 19, we will be moving away from annual monolithic releases and towards shorter release cycles, which means more features, updates, and functionality in your hands faster and more frequently. Now, the other reason this reason is, is special is that Claris FileMaker 19 is our first open platform, allowing developers to extend the platform with shareable add-ons, making it even faster for anyone to build modern apps. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, FileMaker has always enabled developers at all skill levels to create custom apps to improve their workplaces. Now, developers can, now developers can extend the, the platform using things like machine learning and JavaScript and even package their work as plug and play add-ons that others can use. These add-ons will include things like AI powered uh, image classification or uh, photo galleries, Kanban boards and more. So soon we will also make it, a, make it possible for third party developers, you, to create and share your plug and play add-on components with others through the Claris marketplace. Imagine if you will, an app store, but for add-ons. So you'll be able to find these new add-ons and quickly snap them into your own custom apps. We believe the next new FileMaker feature will be built by you. So let's dive deeper into how to extend the platform with JavaScript. Now, JavaScript integration is going to be a game, a, a game changer for pro developers looking to extend the on-native FileMaker tools for native functionality. In Claris FileMaker 19, you can create powerful modern apps using readily available JavaScript libraries or your own custom JavaScript code in a web viewer. Now, directly uh, embed things in your apps like maps and animated graphics, data visualization, and more. Uh, JavaScript has a huge community of developers that are constantly updating a vast collection of JavaScript libraries uh, like Vue.js and D3, containing amazing features and functionality. This is this is going to unlock an entire universe of tools that are now uh, at your fingertips without ever having to leave the FileMaker platform. Claris FileMaker 19, you can continue to deliver on the expectation uh, of, of reliable custom apps while meeting new standards of visualization and, and capabilities your customers have always wanted. So how do you bring that about? Well, let me explain a little bit how this works. Imagine, if you will, you have a web viewer on a layout. And uh, in that web viewer, um, come available now a new JavaScript function called FileMaker Perform Script. 
if in that function I provide the name of a FileMaker script, that function can trigger that FileMaker script and even pass on a parameter that I can then retrieve in FileMaker using the get script parameter function. By the same token, if I have a FileMaker script using the new perform JavaScript in WebViewer script step, I can specify a JavaScript function that I can trigger from, um, from that script into directly in, in the web viewer. So let me show you very quickly what that would look like in practice. So over here, I've got a web viewer here in the middle and I've got some native FileMaker fields here on the right. Now to kind of show you what kind of behind the scenes, I've exposed the, the code that's driving this web viewer over here. There's some HTML and there's some JavaScript over here. Now the cool thing over here, you'll see there, that new JavaScript function that becomes available in the web viewer for any JavaScript code in there. In this case, this function is taking all the, the, um, the information from this form, packaging it together, and um, will trigger a FileMaker script called store data from web form. What that means is then I can type in and uh, make changes over here. And when I submit, that function runs, which triggers that FileMaker script. Conversely, then, I can also make changes here in my fields. And this button here is wired to run a script in the FileMaker that then runs a JavaScript, uh, triggers a FileMaker, the JavaScript function that's in here in the web viewer that will then eventually update the web form. Now, what does that all mean in practice, really? Well, means that we can do some really amazing integration. So over here, for example, we have this really nice visualization built in a web viewer with a JavaScript library. But if I click on any one of these segments, I have a FileMaker script that then goes and updates the portal that you see here below. Not only that, but also making changes here in FileMaker and then can then trigger functions inside of that, that web viewer, making these beautiful animations and transitions. So, with JavaScript integration, you'll be able to really take the UI and UX experience uh, in your applications to a whole new level. So that's JavaScript integration, a quick view at JavaScript integration in the new Claris FileMaker 19. But I do understand that not everyone has JavaScript skills or even the dedicated time to learn a new language. And this, uh, and and, and remember that the Claris vision, after all, is powerful technologies to everyone. This is where add-ons come into play. Add-ons are reusable modular components that anyone can create to easily add more functionality to their apps. Add-ons add can also be uh, easily shared with others. Now you'll be able to find new add-ons coming soon in the Claris marketplace and quickly snap them into your own custom apps. Add-ons can have a drag and drop component that you can quickly place on your layouts, but they can also include things like scripts and tables, data, and even entire layouts. Add-ons can be simple controls like switches or sliders, as well as feature-rich things as Kanban boards or even photo galleries. And they can take advantage of any of the technologies available in FileMaker, including machine learning and JavaScript. Many members of the community are already hard at work converting existing work into add-ons, as well as creating brand new add-ons that they will share with the community soon. In addition, Claris will release a series of new modular JavaScript-based add-on components. And you can start experimenting with your own add-on components through a preview script step available now called the Save a Copy as Add-on Package. Let me show you a quick preview of what that looks like. Now, if you're like me, you probably have a library of objects and scripts and custom functions that you've accumulated over the years that, that you often use in your own custom apps. I've got a collection of objects that I constantly use, uh, things from like switches and uh, little score things like, like this. And I love to use these, they're great. I've, I've, I've created some of these and I've gotten some from the community as well. But trying to put them into my own, into a brand new custom app, really uh, requires me to copy and paste these objects and then kind of have to do data surgery to get those up and running and wired into the new app. 
and sharing these with others, it's just so, so difficult because I'd have to explain every single one of these things and make sure everybody copies everything in the right order. So this is where add-ons come in. Let's say, for example, I wanted to take this switch and package it as an add-on. So I can create a brand new file that has only the components required for this, this uh, feature that I have. So I've got here a layout, just one layout here in this file that has that component. Uh, and it has just the one script that it needs to run this, uh, this switch. In this land, I also created this one little button over here that has a single step. The new save a copy as add-on package. And this is what's gonna allow me to save all the entire contents of this file as an add-on package. When I run this, that button, I get the add-on package. An add-on package is nothing more than a collection of files, mostly XML and, and JSON. And in order to get it available into FileMaker Pro, all I need to do is take this package and move it into the add-on modules folder inside of my FileMaker installation folder. Now, once that's done, then I can retrieve and use that, uh, that new add-on by going into layout mode and moving into the add-ons uh, into the add-on section here in the left pane and clicking on the plus button. Here I'll see all the add-ons, both customs and those that are, that are pre-built in. And choose the add-on that I want. And now every single component that was part of that add-on is now uh, built in and copied over into, uh, uh, into my file, including the script that I had there in my original file. And now adding it to layout is as simple as just dragging and dropping uh, in there. And I've configured this particular add-on to make it easy for me to wire into new solutions. So uh, specifying the, the field, for example, I can use uh, one of these functions. And um, I can also change here the label. Maybe we'll do something like this and place that there. And I've got a fully functioning switch that I can use over and over again. The best thing is I can package this up and also share it with anybody and they can install it in their own, uh, in their own custom apps very quickly and easily. So that's a quick view at add-ons. With add-ons, you'll be able to snap together robust uh, apps faster than ever. It's a whole new way to easily add more functionality to your apps and can't wait to see what you create. Now let's explore um, a few new enhancements that are available now in Claris FileMaker 19, this time around making, making smarter apps. And if we're talking about powerful modern tools, you know, we have to talk about AI and machine learning. So this takes us to FileMaker's new support, support for Apple's CoreML or machine, uh, machine learning framework that's available on iOS and macOS. With machine learning, computer, computer systems can be trained to make predictions based on existing data. So what are the things that we can do? Well, for example, um, there's a machine learning model that does sentiment analysis. So a computer system can retrieve, uh, can reveal the, the tone of a message like feedback on a company's website. Or maybe you want to see um, who the artist is uh, of a photograph or a painting you come across. In this uh, uh, screenshot that we have over here, we, we are given a part that we're not familiar with. So we can leverage CoreML to identify the part and determine if, the, if it is an item that we have in stock or not. You know, after taking the photo of the part, a list of potential results is produced along with the model's percentage of, of confidence. Now, integrating CoreML into your own custom apps comes down to just a few things. You'll need the CoreML file, you need a container field to house or to store the, your CoreML file, and you use a new script step and a new function. The CoreML file is something either you either built, you've trained yourself, or you can use an existing model created by others. The new script step configure machine learning model allows you to load and unload the, the CoreML models. And the new function, compute model, allows you to uh, run the prediction, right? provides a CoreML model with its inputs and, and the format, and format the outputs for analysis and for display. So let's have a quick look at machine learning using CoreML in FileMaker 19. So I've got a CoreML model that I actually downloaded from the internet. And this particular model uh, 
allows me to very quickly classify kind of the, the, the dominant object in a particular image. Now to drive it, like I said, I only need two things. I only need one script step to load the model, make it available. And then once it's loaded, all I need is really just uh, one, uh, one function to run the prediction and let me know uh, and give me the output. So I'll go ahead and load this model and I'll run, and I'll run the prediction. And the output, as you can see over here, is a list of possible things that this machine learning model believes is, is the dominant object on this picture. Now you can see with the high confidence uh, level, uh, over 82%, it believes it's some, something like a lake side or a lake shore. And it's wonderful, but it has all these other, these other predictions here as well. I can provide an additional the option over here that can reduce the amount of, of output that it that produces by saying that I want only things that have at least an 80% confidence level. And if I go a little bit too high, then there's another option over here that forces the model to return at least one, the one with the highest confidence. Now, what does this mean? Well, I could do some really amazing things with this type of technology. So let's say, for example, um, we've got here, uh, we've got a review system and we have a sentiment analysis uh, model over here that will allow me to tell me whether that review is, is a positive or negative. And this analysis happens here, the prediction happens on the machine. There's no round trip to the internet or anything like that. So it happens really, really fast and it also preserves privacy. How about uh, this other example over here? Maybe we, um, based off of the existing historical data, we were able to narrow down and use regression to create a model that predicts the amount of hours that we might bill a new customer as they're being onboarded. So using, uh, using a set of variables that we, that we provided, we could run a prediction over here and kind of guess how many hours we might bill this customer in the first year. And this is started to help us help say, my, my salespeople to qualify brand new customers and give them information that they need quickly. So that was a quick uh, view at using machine language, how easy and very quickly it is to add machine learning into your apps to make them smarter. Now continuing with that, we're now also bringing support to Siri, uh, uh, bringing support to uh, Clarice FileMaker 19 for Siri shortcuts. Uh, with this, you'll be able to, to use your voice to run automations like searching for records, updating inventory, or starting a process with FileMaker's uh, built-in support here for Siri shortcuts. Now, to enable this, you go simply to the script work, uh, workspace uh, on the scripts menu, and you can right-click on a script and choose to enable a script to be donated to shortcuts. When the user then uh, opens their shortcuts app on iOS, they will see FileMaker Go along with a list of the scripts that you've donated. The user can then create a larger uh, shortcut experience picking and choosing from the scripts you've provided. Once created, the task can be performed with just a tap or by asking Siri. Finally, let's talk about support for NFC or near field communication. Now FileMaker 19 has the ability to read NFC tags. So you'll be able to quickly get information uh, for things like um, tag machinery or navigate to a specific item in a database or check out a kiosk um, using a, the new configure NFC reading script step. Now, this new script step allows us to very quickly uh, uh, start the process of reading or scanning for NFC tags. I'd like to show you very quickly what that, that might look like um, in an app here on a mobile device. So let's say, for example, we've, uh, we've got an inventory app it's running on, on, our, uh, on our iPhone, and we realize that well, we're running low or we're out of stock on a particular item. I want to be able to be able to reorder this uh, item very quickly and, and accurately. So I go back into the stock room, and uh, we've got some NFC tags uh, on the box and, and on the, the items themselves. So by tapping on the button over here, it triggers the, uh, the scan process here, and then I can move closer and read the tags. Now I'm going to display here all the different pieces of information that uh, get read, but normally you, don't, you wouldn't display this. But what I really want is that SKU number that you see there in the middle. So now I can pass this information along to another script that will parse that, take the SKU number, send it over to the order request 
uh, script and then be able to place the order accurately and quickly. Excellent. So now let's uh, move on talking about the next chapter for FileMaker Server and one of our top feature requests. We are really excited to introduce a new FileMaker Server for Linux, one of the most, ro most robust and trusted platform ser server deployments. Now this will uh, initially be delivered as an RPM package and made available to licensing customers alongside our Mac OS and Windows server. Now, I don't have to say that, uh, that the, this is going to be ideal for virtual machines and, and bare metal uh, deployments. Linux is a very popular open source platform with IT professionals and, and server administrators. And you know, it's just amazing, high performance and highly configurable. So very, very excited to be able to bring FileMaker Server for Linux in this release. Now, other highly requested features that are now available in Claris FileMaker 19 includes card windows, now supported in FileMaker WebDirect. And not only are they supported in, in FileMaker WebDirect, but card windows in FileMaker WebDirect now support the adjust window, the move resize window, and the new window script steps. In addition, we, we're bringing in layout mode navigation to be able to switch very quickly, uh, switch layouts very quickly by name. So in layout mode, if you uh, press Control Alt K in uh, on Windows or Command Alt K on Mac, it brings up a uh, brings up a shortcut dialog where you can enter the name of the layout that you want to navigate. And this is wonderful, especially if you've got a lot of layouts. I've got some apps that have dozens and dozens of of layouts, instead of having them going through a list, I can quickly type in the name of the layout and jump directly to it. Also, we've added a, the ability to specify a file that will automatically be open when FileMaker Pro starts. It's gonna be available in, it's available in the preferences under the Generals tab. You turn on that, that option and you can specify which file should be automatically launched every time FileMaker Pro launches. Something else I want to highlight is a um, new feature that allows you to create new uh, to create uh, create new files directly into FileMaker Cloud. Now we all know and we've got expectations for cloud to be simple and a fast environment, but to be honest, currently uh, creating an app and then deploying it for FileMaker Cloud involves multiple steps, right? It, it starts out with cre the creation of the app. You normally will save it on your desktop, and then ultimately, you, after doing some setup, you upload into your cloud environment. And Claris FileMaker 19, we're taking another step towards a zero configuration deployment model. Well, now you can create a new file and specify a location, and when you specify the location, you can now choose a FileMaker Cloud environment as the destination and cut down on the clicks that that would previously take you to bring those apps into, into the cloud. And additionally, this feature will automatically enable the FileMaker WebDirect extended privilege. So taking it from the creation to having that, that app available to everybody very, very quickly. As you can see, there's just so many great features here in, uh, in this release of, of FileMaker. We are extremely excited. Uh, with Claris FileMaker 19, we now have the ability to snap together robust apps faster than ever. It's going to be a whole new way to easily add more, more functionality to your apps, um, all that with add-ons. We can also now extend the platform using readily available JavaScript libraries or even use your own custom code. We also have the ability to now to unlock the potential of your data and enable rich user experiences with AI and machine learning for smarter apps. Support for Siri shortcuts, right? Use your voice to run automations like searching for records and, and starting a process. Uh, NFC, NFC tag reading to quickly get information on, on tagged merchandise and navigate to specific items in a database. Now also create apps directly in the cloud with zero configuration and deployment. Uh, now you can host your apps on Linux, an industry standard OS for high availability and reliability. In addition to all these other things, we've also added here support for dark mode in Mac OS. We've also made the installer for FileMaker Pro a drag and drop in Mac OS. So now install FileMaker by dragging and dropping the, the application directly onto the hard drive. We also brought support for high efficiency image format images on layouts and in container fields that can be viewed on Mac OS, iOS, and iPad OS. 
and many, many more things. Now, for more detailed information about these and other uh, additions to the Clash platform, please visit our product documentation center um, on this link. All right, we promised that we were going to uh, answer questions, and I've seen many people already uh, submit your questions. If you haven't, now it's a great time to do so. So we're going to take a few minutes to answer uh, answer those. Um, let's see. Um, Alan is asking here about uh, uh, about availability availability in 64-bit. Yes, Alan, we have moved completely over to 64-bit uh, for our desktop app. Yep, absolutely. Um, asking here, I've got a question here on uh, what's the size of the ML models. Uh, that really depends. Uh, it really depends on the model. I've seen models that are only a few K, and I've seen others that are several megabytes. So it really depends on the model. Um, I, I, there's a tendency that certain models that um, especially kind of those that are on the vision that process images, especially if they have a very large, um, you know, they're doing like image classification and there's a large set of uh, classes, uh, the, the tendency is to have bigger models, end up with bigger models. But um, yeah, usually they're, I, I've seen, again, I've seen that small, it's just a few uh, kilobytes and I've seen all the way up to uh, several megabytes. Uh, the cool thing about CoreML, uh, to kind of continue on that, is that, it, this format, which is Apple's format, is really optimized for these devices. So they tend to be smaller in, in uh, many cases. All right, um, let's see, we've got um, some questions here where you can find uh, some, some uh, machine learning models, some ML models. Uh, if you do a quick search online, uh, search for CoreML, and there's a bunch of them out there available, uh, you can also, take models that are in different formats and convert them to CoreML. Apple provides some uh, free tools that allow you to take the models in different formats and convert them to CoreML. Uh, or, to be honest, you can uh, also learn to train your own. Uh, Apple has some really great tools to make it very easy to create CoreML models. Uh, I myself created a couple of them uh, last week, and it's just really great to be able to do that uh, with uh, kind of really easy to use tools. And I'm not a data scientist uh, by any means. Um, all right, good. Let's see, we've got uh, other questions. Um, uh, let's see. Nope, FileMaker Go is not available for Android right now, but we have mentioned you know, support for Android uh, in our roadmap, so stay tuned for that. Um, let's see. Uh, it's asking here if standalone applications can be created uh, similar to FileMaker 18. Um, I'm not simply sure what you're asking about standalone applications. If you're talking about runtimes, we have been, uh, we've marked runtimes to uh, for deprecation for quite a couple of years now, and uh, we are actually removing runtimes from um, from the platform as of FileMaker 19. Uh, I'm not sure if that was the question. Uh, I have a question here on kind of uh, I got actually a couple of questions here on how to uh, limit or how to restrict access to JavaScript uh, inside of your apps. And um, so something that maybe I, I didn't mention is you know, in order to get the JavaScript running, you have to kind of give it access. And the first thing you have to do is that in the web viewer, in the configuration, you double click on the web viewer and configuring the web viewer, there's a new checkbox there. And if you don't turn that on, uh, JavaScript will not be able to access FileMaker. So uh, you kind of have to go in there. Existing web viewers, if you've had web viewers already from previous uh, apps, uh, won't automatically uh, have access to that uh, new function. You have to go in there and turn that on, uh, which is great because it gives you control and access to those things, right? Yep. Um, See, Joel's asking uh, uh, ETA on, on those add-ons. Uh, if you're talking about the ones that that uh, Claris is going to is going to release, uh, I don't have a date uh, for you, uh, but it's going to be uh, fairly soon. We're kind of in final tweaks on those. We'll have those available. We're just really excited about those, and we're gonna we're gonna release those as updates. So you'll get updates. Uh, it's actually regular updates to FileMaker Pro. You'll get the updates, and uh, the add-ons will be included in there. So, and we're gonna release several of them but the community is already hard at work creating some really amazing ones. I've spoken to some, uh, some of the people on the community who are doing some amazing work uh, with add-ons, so it's really exciting. 
Um, um, some questions here about licensing. There is no licensing changes um, compared to FileMaker 18. So we've got the, the nothing has changed as far as the type of licensing and things like that, or pricing for that matter uh, as well. Yep. Um, some questions here about FileMaker Server. So the new FileMaker server for Linux will be in addition to the Mac OS and the Windows version that we have, and it will be uh, become available to uh, into um, licensed customers. So you'll have now the option. You'll have three options, and uh, it's available. It's going to be available as a, as a preview first, but we expect to have it have feature parity with a FileMaker server for Linux with the other with the Mac OS and Windows versions by uh, later this year. So we're moving very very quickly, very fast. And getting a FileMaker server for Linux up and running with feature parity and making sure that we have an amazing experience across the board. Uh, we've got a lot of customers who are very excited about that because uh, they want been asking for for that FileMaker server for Linux for their uh, VM environments and some bare metal uh, installations as well. Yep. All right, some other questions here uh, about add-ons. Um, Yes, uh, so add-ons, yes, can be completely shareable. So if, uh, like I showed earlier, that the add-on package is basically a folder. And when you click on the button, you run the script step, that folder gets created. It, to be honest, when you click, when you run that script, the package gets, gets created and placed directly where it needs to be in FileMaker Pro, so it becomes immediately available to you on your installation of FileMaker Pro. But if you want to share with somebody else, you just need to take that folder. You might want to compress it and then uh, send it over to somebody else, and all they have to do is uh, unpackaging and place it in their own folder uh, and restart Comic for Pro. <laughs> but other than that, that's about it. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, we've got some questions here on uh, what we're going to be calling new releases of FileMaker. Um, I, I don't have an answer for that, but uh, since we're going to be moving away from kind of those yearly cycles, um, you know, it. it we may not see a FileMaker 20 or something like that. It, it might be something else. We're moving again away from those annual uh, release cycles and to kind of shorter uh, release cycles to get you the, the features that, that you need faster. And that way we can uh, be much more responsive to your needs. So you don't know exactly what the naming convention might be. That's a good question. All right. Let's see. I got time for. Let's see. Got time for uh, one more. Um, see. Uh, yeah. No. We've. I think uh, we kind of answered this one. Yeah. There's no change in in the licensing uh, so far. Uh, there will be no licensing change as of FileMaker 19. Oh. Um. One last question here. Yes. So we expect to have this about add-ons and its availability on Claris uh, Marketplace. So we are planning to have a set up marketplace to have add-ons there. So we have this amazing vision of having sort of like an app store in, in uh, Claris Marketplace. So you'll be able to go there, search for, for a cool add-on that, that you might want, download. Uh, you know, we expect some of them to be free. Some of them might be, uh, might be fee-based as well, right? So we've got the community creating these amazing new, new things and sharing them with everybody. So uh, we expect to have a really uh, amazing experience in Claris Marketplace so that you'll be able to find very quickly the add-ons that you're looking for, download uh, and install them, and uh, start using them as quickly as possible in your own custom apps. All right, I think uh, those are all the questions we had here for today. So with that, this concludes our Claris webinar. Today, you can find more information by going to our site, www.claris.com. Thank you so much for your time and have a great rest of the day.